for Miss Milky the Clown, and the Boo Magic 2012, 2012 Truthers. You guys, I really, really, really appreciate it. And it's nice to get some confirmation that, you know, my theories, my contentions are not bizarre. They're not from another planet. It's not nothing crazy. It's sound, and I think I've got every reason to be suspicious of the alternative media. And we'll get deeper into that before I go into the Intel Hub, Higgins, and Natural News, and Alex Jones. I know a lot of you are anxious to hear what happened there, but I want to upload my screen capture evidence so you can log on. I'm going to call it Exhibit A and open another blog, and you'll be able to look at these screen captures yourself and judge for yourself, you know, because, hey, maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I want you to think and I want you to come to your own conclusion. That's what's important. Now, tonight, as I've been promising, I want to talk about the four herds very briefly. It's not going to take long, and it's kind of a social classification I've come up with because what I noticed was, and even myself, I fell victim to, you know, their strategies and their plans within the alternative media because, like most people, I became suspicious of the mainstream media, found out it was pretty much nonstop lies on the news every night or just total, you know, omission of the pertinent facts. So then, like anyone else, I'm looking amongst the alternative media, and then amongst the alternative media, when I really got involved in it and found out what was going on, well, I look back on, the, on what I call the second herd, and nothing derogatory meant by it at all, just a classification, call them sheep or whatever. But until people come to the conclusion, the eventual obvious conclusion that Socrates did, that you know we really don't know very much. We really don't know very much. Our best research and study and spending all our time, you know, looking all over the place for answers. You know, in my opinion now, I, I don't have all the answers, and I, I doubt most people do. So let's look at the first herd, and this is the one everyone's familiar with. You call them sheeple. Again, nothing derogatory meant by that. Just trying to classify these different groups of people that are behaving in different ways and they're believing different things. And I'll read from my article called The Four Herds. The first herd. The first herd lives and dies by the word of the mainstream media. What Diane Sawyer and Dan Rather say is law, reality, the truth, end of story. It's very, very hard to awaken a member of the first herd. After all, it's such a comfortable, pleasant reality in which they live. Members of the first herd are often referred to as sheeple, and in a manner of speaking, they are sheared on a regular basis. That would be our financial collapses every 10 years cyclically. There is a theory that many of the first herd know of the other two herds, but prefer a good shearing every now and then to the reality of the desert of the real. I use a lot of quotes and phrases from The Matrix because, philosophically speaking, that movie is very accurate. Only my contention is with the second herd, as I said in a previous show, when Neo is awakened in his container, uh, a fair analogy would be he would open that container and then find himself in a yet another container that's still yet another sub-reality, maybe closer to the truth, but still not the entire truth. So the first herd lives in an automated society. You know, if you read Bill Cooper's works, and especially uh, Behold the Pale Horse, he goes into social automation uh, with a chapter called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Very interesting. I've written an analysis of that as well, and that's on my WordPress blog if you want to look into that. And it's important you understand that society is automated. Look around you. Today what happened in Gainesville, Florida, the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks came to play the Gators. People got drunk as usual, painted their bellies up, and danced around. My mom called me earlier and said, Are you all right, son? There's helicopters and ambulances all over town. I said, Mom, it's game night. You know, sometimes uh, a police officer was run over and killed in the street. So it's a social automation. They, they know exactly how to get these people to behave in a certain way. If you have alcohol legal and it's readily accessible and you have these sports events, you can pretty much put two and two together and, and, and see how people are going to act. So it's, it's critical understanding social automation. And a lot of what I'm telling you tonight with the four herd concept goes hand in hand with the protocols of Zion, protocol number 12, control of the press because they have to approach different uh, groups of people differently. Like I say, those in the alternative media searching branches, they're already very suspicious, or you should be very suspicious, and you should be very critical. But again, I say they've been fooled very in a very sublime manner into thinking they're getting the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and getting it right now. Okay, That's very critical you understand that. They enjoy an automated society. They don't yet realize how fun thinking for yourself can actually be. Wake members of the first herd gently, slowly or they will bite and kick you with their hooves. And again, that's the, the sheeple we refer to, and the, they, they watch a lot of mainstream and live and die by that, and they really actually believe 
a lot of what we think may be psychological operations or some kind of special operation like Quran burnings and the Muhammad films, they may think that's actually organic and real, and those events are actual real events that are perpetrated in an you know, organic fashion, and nothing is a hoax, and nothing is a pre-planned event like a false flag type thing. Now, let's look at the second herd, because that's the herd that I, I really believe that a lot of alternative people are being fooled right now, and they're being socially automated themselves with these DHS bullet acquisition and police brutality memes, and I'm not saying... You know, there's not some kind of takeover maybe going on. There's plenty of evidence for that. But I think what they're trying to do is instill fear and shake people up and, <clears throat> excuse me, try to create this powder keg type environment where, who knows, maybe some type of uh, incident with the police and people on the street will cause some kind of uprisings like the Rodney King incident. I watched a YouTube video the other day that a gentleman made that contention and it, it made a whole lot of sense. You know, if you leave people desperate and, and there's a lot of police, well, men, not a lot. I mean, if they promote it, it seems like a lot of police brutality. And maybe it's higher than ever with returning veterans coming back from Iraq. I don't know. I'm not uh, too up to date on that. But I tend to think they're kind of promoting it heavily. And that's my example. Within the, within the second herd, there's particular memes being pushed forward. And, and things are being avoided and not talked about. You'll get your fast and furious and, and get your dose of that. But when it comes to plume gate and this giant a conspiracy to hide the plume and fallout, and then you look at the death toll and everything. We'll look at that quickly. I need to hurry up here. Um, so let's get right back to this, get distracted. Okay, the third herd, that's the Socratic herd. And that's what I say that uh, if, you're, if you're aware that there's a lot you don't know and there's a lot you're not going to know, because if you think about the Illuminati and the power elite and the global elite, they, they are masters of the occult. They've been collecting this information and, uh, and compiling it for hundreds of years. What do we get? Well, we get a lot of disinformation, a lot of stuff they don't even talk about. So it's very difficult to come to conclusions when the information is being controlled to such a degree. Let me get back. I missed the second herd. Second herd. Second herd thinks they have awakened. Most are well-intentioned people searching for the truth, but they are corralled by the likes of Alex Jones, Mike Adams, and other quote-unquote alternative and quote-unquote independent media figureheads who sell only government-approved propaganda and never offer any solutions. You know, talking about solutions, the one thing I've noticed, a complete absence in the alternative media is a solution for the chemtrail problem. Okay, we're getting sprayed. I'm getting sprayed here every day in Florida, almost every day, and it's getting kind of ridiculous. And in all this time, I've never seen a bona fide solution put forth to try and get the chemtrail stopped, right? So we know that Alcoa is the number one aluminum manufacturer in the world. And we know the, the, the most common substance found in chemtrails is purported to be aluminum oxide, which is a leftover in the process of making aluminum. Now, Alcoa meets with Bilderberg every year, so it's just two and two putting that together to fill, figure out the conspiracy there. So the obvious solution would be to, to employ Gandhi's power of the purse, and we have a boycott, a boycott on aluminum drinks, a boycott on aluminum. If you buy an old used aluminum bike at a store, that would be one thing, but no one has initiated a boycott on aluminum, and that's the only way you're going to get that to change because it's now a corporate world. There's really not countries anymore. There's not nations anymore. It's these giant corporations, and all they understand is cash flow, cash flow. That's all they understand. So there's no solutions being put forth in the alternative media by and large. Sometimes there are, and like I say, not everyone's a troll, not everyone's a shill, and not every outlet is a controlled outlet. But for Plumegate to have not arisen this summer in the fashion that I'm describing it to as it should have, I, I think we can you know, conclude that there's something amiss in the alternative media and, and grave issues like this particular one that, that could have affected the outcome of the election are simply you know, swept under the rug. And if they're touched upon, it's only because, like I say, I wrote multiple articles fingering certain people and saying, hey, what's going on here? They're not even writing about this. It's been out for months and months. Okay, back to the read. Uh, they're fear-mongering tricksters that tell the truth but not the whole truth, and they don't always give it right away. And they're not always accurate. There's media uh, ma uh, malpractice, and fact-checking is not going on. My initial mistake that I, as when I worked for Intel Hub, I asked Bob twice to make this correction. He never did. Well, by the time the Prison Planet show came around on the 11th of May, you have Mike Adams up there repeating this erroneous 16 or 18,000 stillborn death figure, which I had gone back under the thread immediately and made a correction to, hey, I made a mistake. It's, 
you know, that's an overall estimate is 800-something infant fatalities, you know. So they're not fact-checking, and these articles are being massively distributed as like a copy-paste or mirror, as they say, even though they're not mirrored accurately every time, as I'll show you later once I upload my evidence, and we'll, we'll examine that. So there's, it's not accurate, and they're not always giving you the full truth right away. <clears throat> okay, back to the read. The second herd has not yet realized just how deep the level of deception goes. The second herd thinks the deception is contained within the first rank media outlets, and that's a term used in the protocols of the wise men of Zion. The first rank outlets, would, an example would be ABC, CBS, and they're called first rank because they never differ from their position. You know, when you watch CBS, it's always a war on terror, and it's drones are a good thing and all that kind of stuff. They never deviate, and people are somewhat skeptical of them these days, hopefully, because of that. They never really deviate from their establishment viewpoint. Second herd thinks that's all contained with the first rank media outlet. I say to you, it's very foolish to assume that this Operation Mockingbird, original Mockingbird, was only going to be, you know, relegated to the mainstream press. And my example of that is, you know, if you think about them planning ahead of time, they wouldn't say, let's take control of the mainstream press and get a lockdown on that, but leave the you know, the general public at large to have the alternative media and let them have the independent media and talk amongst themselves and figure things out. Now, that just doesn't make any sense. From a logic standpoint, you would control the mainstream first. Knowing the Internet was arising in the near future, you would plant agents early on and start doctoring them and building them up, and then you intercept the flow of information in the alternative media that develops and grows, and that's just a strategy that's a common sense logical strategy. To go a bit deeper down the rabbit hole, you would then plant a few agents amongst the independent media as well. And like I say, my, my depth sound has always been Plumegate, the NRC FOIA documents, and the multiple agency conspiracy contained within to hide the radioactive plume and fallout. Now, the death tolls at 40,000 plus, and we can go over numbers with that if I get to that. But in the independent media as well, they want to place some figureheads in there. It's like a really, you're covering all of the board. You want to cover the entire map. I mean, this is strategy. And these pe people have money. We're talking, I've heard, from 350 to $500 trillion, <coughs> excuse me, for the Rothschilds alone. And then you have the Standard Oil and Rockefeller. And, I mean, and plus, plus, folks, as we all well know, they can print all the money they want. So as long as people will perform these deeds for them, these evil people, and I've come to the conclusion there really are just evil people that will do anything for cash. That's part of how they're able to carry these plans out, you know, until people will grow up and realize that some things aren't worth money. It's better to live in a cardboard box and continue this business. Okay, back to the second herd. They think it's contained within the first-ranked outlets, but obviously they have the strategy and money to move it beyond that. They also believe the alternative and independent media are pure, pristine, and innocent like a babe. Far from it. Perhaps they have not sat for long periods of time and contemplated just what $500 trillion can do in this world. Deception is mathematical. Will the second herd ever figure this out? Not as long as they underestimate their opposition's ability to control the flow of information. That is very important. I think most people in the alternative media searching for answers are very much so underestimating the opposition's ability to control the flow of information. Let me give you a nice little example. In the run-up intro to the Alex Jones Info Wars, when I used to listen to it, there's the Hillary Clinton little soundbite. We're in an information war, and we aren't leaving that war. Okay, and the fact of the matter is, I've thought about this very carefully. Well, if they're in cahoots, to coin a southern term, if they're in cahoots, Hillary makes that statement on purpose. All right, they know they're whipping our butt in the information area. I tell you, they really are, and they know this, but... It is a military strategy. It's the ancient art of war by Sun Tzu to fool your opponent into thinking he is, in fact, winning. He is, in fact, ahead. So your opponent relaxed if he says, hey, we've, we've got him, Alex Jones. We're pounding him. We've got the new world order on the run, it says. We've got him on the run. Well, I'm thinking to myself, we don't have him on the run. As a matter of fact, they got us right where they want us because the largest, most damning issue of this election cycle, it never came to be paraded and highlighted like it should have. That's my... You know, I rest my case on that alone on a larger scope. That evidence, you know, is the lack of evidence, if you will. If you look amongst the Facebook people who are the alternative media group on there, there's not a lot about the NRC FOIA documents. I haven't seen it, and if there is, it doesn't tie it into the larger picture with Obama 
give you the fatality numbers, give you the history of three mile and Chernobyl, give you that big lock, big picture to paint that so people can look people who are the alternative media group on there. There's not a lot about the NRC for you documents. I haven't seen it, and if there is, it doesn't tie it into the larger picture with Obama, give you the fatality numbers, give you the history of three mile and Chernobyl, give you that big lock, big picture to paint that so people can make a decision being given the entire arena of facts that they need to make an informed decision. That's critical in my articles, and that's what I do. And I say that is the difference between mine and the other few articles. That, and I don't knock any news informable. You really want to uh, go to those sites. There's a lot of good information there. And Alexander Higgins also as well. He has the uh, real-time EPA monitors, which might not get to talk about tonight, but they're spiking over 100 counts in Bakersfield, California. And according to Berkeley, a hundred count is high, and anything over that you should be worried about. So Fukushima is an ongoing problem, not going anywhere. Thanks to alternative media, we did not get the word out in time to make a difference in the election. And not just, I'm not picking on Obama, like I say. Romney is also either ignorant or bought and paid for because he thinks nuclear power is clean at the debate the other night. He says that. So, and he won't mention the FOIA documents to, to, to use that as a tool, a pry bar against Obama in order to unseat him so he can't get another you know, four years, we don't want it. We don't want Romney either. Personally, I'm thinking of voting Green Party for Jill Stein, who's against nuclear power and has a lot of other good parts of their platform as well. Okay, back to the thing. So the second herd is basically they're underestimating their opposition. So I suggest people give it some more thoughts, some more contemplation, and just pretend in your mind, play games, pretend you're George Soros, pretend you're Illuminati, and you have all these trillions of dollars. What would you do? What would you do? You open a few radio stations, you open some TV stations, you hire some shills, you hire some trolls, you know, that's what you do with it, and you influence public opinion. And that's what Hillary Clinton said. She wanted 40,000 fake user accounts so she could sway public opinion. But they're not losing the information war, but hey, why not pour it on right near the end? And, you know, people ask me, how can Alex Jones and some of these sites give some good information? Because I don't deny that. They actually do give some really good information. But it's not the best information. They, that's distractionary, really, in the end, because nothing comes of it. What's come of all the 9-11 talk? That's a big subject. You can talk about the USS Liberty. That's a big subject. I saw someone post something about the Poppy Bush White House era and the prostitution, the gay, you know, whatever in the White House. But nothing's going to come of that. The difference is on Plumegate, we've got all the evidence that someone in the DOJ or some prosecutor needs to be issuing indictments, and then that will all lead back to the White House and we can find out who was involved. Because in the documents, they don't really mention names. It just says White House meeting. So we know the White House heavily White House lead, that kind of thing. We know they're involved, but to what extent? And if we don't get people on the stand in a relative time before memories fail and they're like Gonzalez, I can't recall, you know, Time is of the essence. Now let's talk about the third herd, because that's those of us now who are waking up, really kind of waking up as best we can, and understanding that something is terribly wrong in the alternative and some of the independent media. We'll see how this plays out and who carries Plumegate to the degree that they should, and you know what I mean by that, by giving the big picture, the death toll, the, you know, the children's doses to California, exposing that kind of information is critical. The third herd is awake and that they know they are being fooled and that they are aware of the many different levels of perceived realities. I explained to you, we're like Neo waking up out of his chamber into another chamber. And then we still got to get on that one because Alex Jones is in that second chamber and he's not going to tell you about Plumegate. So you still haven't woken up yet. Now, the third herd is awake. The third herd is awake. They know they're being fooled. Example, my cat has no idea about the impending Iran war or World War III or even the concept of war. Does that make Iran or war any less real? In the same manner, the third herd knows there is much they don't know, just like the Greek philosopher Socrates did. The third herd knows how difficult it is to find the truth about the events unfolding before us. They know the true rulers of this planet, we shall call them the Illuminati, have bent their resources and willpower to find all human weaknesses and exploit them. They understand that the human brain is a flesh computer. It has desires. It has fears. It is programmable. It can be automated. The third herd know this and know the Illuminati know this and are using it against the human race. And that's important you understand that because I often, when I talk with people, I tell them it's as if someone sat down and studied every human weakness and to try to figure out how to exploit every human weakness that there is to the fullest potential. And they're very effective in that. I think they're being very effective at that right now. Oh, the point ago I was going to make, I forgot. 
Why is Alex Jones giving good information? Well, look, I think it's, they don't have much longer to go. I mean, look at the FEMA coffins, FEMA camps, and all this bullet acquisitions. If this is, in fact, correct, and if this is really going on, there's a lockdown or takeover or some event plan, an X, you know, whatever you want to say, then they only have to keep it going for so long. So during that period of time, he can roll out some good stuff. He can give you the Texas Sunshine Project and Fast and Furious, some, some damning stuff on government, I, I no doubt about it. I learned about eugenics from Alex Jones. That's the first person I really heard about that from, so I don't deny that. But in the long run, as time plays out, we will see just how much longer we have before there's some kind of new world order, one world takeover, and a military crackdown as people are theorizing. So that does play into that timeline. They're going to give you some, not something so bad that people really raise a fuss and, and something comes of it, you see, because right now they're automated. And in these, in these little classifications of mine, they're each going about doing what they've kind of been programmed to do. And so it's, it's critical you understand that. I forgot to mention that a minute ago. Okay, so I hope you understand this concept of the first, second, third herd. And the fourth herd, I say, is Illuminati. And, of course, they, you know, they know as much information as they're, you know, they can possibly know. I would suspect not everything. They're not gods or demigods. They may be humans. Maybe they're not even on this planet. I don't know. But it certainly seems to me, just from my studies, that there is some group or organization that is very carefully controlling the entire planet from the hoax of a war with Iran. And if you've read my article, Iran versus USA to fix it in. When you look at nanotechnology, when you look at bioweapons, you know, nuclear technology is old, and besides, it ruins the place that you bomb. You can't go in and take all their resources right away or take their planes off the runway or hijack their computers. When you use a nano weapon, well, it's possible to just have bodies laying everywhere, have Halliburton come in, pick up the bodies, and the spools of war are yours to keep. So that's something to keep in mind. There's this grand chess game being played out. And I tell you that it includes all components of the media. It includes the mainstream. It includes the, the second-rank outlets. And the third-rank outlets would be the alternative media. Second rank is, and this is from the Protocols of Zion, the second-rank outlets would be like a Huffington Post. For example, they will tell you that we need to legalize marijuana, but they still tend to legitimize the war on terror you know, meme. And so they're trying to attract the tepid and indifferent, people who haven't made up their mind yet. And I see this a lot. Don't fall for the, hey, I smoke pot or whatever kind of thing and then trust someone just because they're willing to tell you that they've discovered that cannabis should be legal. And don't be a one-issue voter either. There's serious issues right now. I think the nuclear problem has reached such a degree on this planet that if it's not addressed soon, I mean, it, it may just be too, maybe too late now. I don't know. But they want to build two new plants in Levy County, Florida, we're in the midst of a long-term drought, and these two plants will draw from the aquifer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> that's the madness of, of nuclear power, because they're just not doing anything logical, because if they have gone completely insane. Now, before I go, I want to finish by uh, saying one more thing. Keep in mind that this, these vast uh, financial resources that these power elite, these corporate you know, leaders have, they're able to buy scientists. They're able to open foundations. They're able to have their own special studies done and, and magazines posted up. So they can then refer back. They can say, well, no, there's no emissions because of this. And you can, you, they'll have an article. They'll have a link. A scientist will come out, very well paid, and say something he knows is not true. Online, you have the quote, unquote, trolls and the quote, unquote, chills. You know, I didn't know about this either until I got my laptop and got on Facebook and I got trolled so hard I, I had to write a song about it. You know, check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. So keep in mind it's just critical you understand and play with it in your mind. Pretend you've got the money. What would you do? How would you hire the shills? What kind of, you know, think about it. Give it some time and think about it. Once you play around with it, you'll begin to realize that they're very clever and they've, they've covered all their bases. They've inserted people. It's very deep. There's more than I mean, you would suspect are in there. And, the, again, I rest my case on the fact that the summer came and went, and no one really paraded around with this blockbuster issue that Obama should have faced the consequences, right? Is he such a buffoon? He was just oblivious to it all? You know, he just, I don't know anything about it. You know, that's not good. Can't reelect him on that, right? Was he lied to by the NRC and DOE and CDC and the FEMA and DHS and all these agencies that conspired and kept him out of the loop like Poppy Bush and, and lied to him. Is that possible? You know, or is Obama totally in on it? Now, 
I didn't get to the death tolls tonight, but I wanted to do the, the four herds. No derogatory term meant by that, just classification, so you better understand. I promise next time we'll cover the death fatality mortality index numbers where they, they go in and look and see uh, 14 weeks prior to Fukushima, how many people were dying on average, and then 14 weeks after, and you see it bumps up, just like in Chernobyl. And I posted a link on my YouTube um, video I posted today about my blog talk tonight to the Fukushima Chernobyl a bird study, I call it. And it's very interesting. Please watch it. It's 30 minutes that confirms that this is not an accident. It's not just humans dying in, in elevated numbers, but this guy studies birds, and the birds are also dying in elevated numbers, just as they did when he studied Chernobyl. And if you look at these studies from the fatality index after Chernobyl, again, now we have confirmation. I think Mangano and Sherman might not have put this together in their uh, study that, they, that I'll go over tomorrow, but probably someone needs to get with them and let them know and see this bird study, which kind of confirms, again, a secondary confirmation of everything they've been saying. Okay, I've got less than three minutes left tonight. I had to get to the fatality index numbers, but real quick, according to the thing I'm looking at, by 2031, we'll be well over a million cancer-related you know, fatalities. And, the, and plutonium is five to ten years later, so it doesn't happen right away. You have to keep that in mind. We'll go over those next time. And again, thanks to Red Button Studios, Itchy Sacks 4, Miss Milky the Clown, Nibiru Magic 2012, and especially 2012 Truthers helping me out there. So I'm going to uh, end this broadcast tonight. I appreciate you joining me. And I promise next time we'll go over the Mangano Sherman study and we'll look at the other study by this Bobby One fellow who's just taken the Mangano Sherman and just going on into the future with it for projection so you can kind of see what's going to happen. Of course, that's all dependent that Fukushima doesn't become worse. And if you look at Alexander Higgins, go in there and, and Google his live EPA RADNET monitors, and you can see this last week and even 18th and 19th, there were spikes over 100 counts per minute and beta radiation, 1,000 counts per minute. And according to the Berkeley, like I say, over 100 is something to be worried about. So if this is correct, we're, we're constantly being inundated with radiation, something to keep in mind. Okay, thanks for joining me tonight, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll go over the fatality figures. Over and out.